Mentoring can take many forms, from casual conversations after class with a tutor to formal programs facilitated by the university. We asked a group of undergraduate students from across the University of Melbourne about their experiences with having an alumni mentor. The group discussed the impact and benefits of having a mentor and offer their advice to students interested in mentoring. There's so much competition out there at the moment, especially facing, you know, us students, especially at our age. This could be, and this is sort of the edge that you need to, you know, take, get that little bit ahead of the rest of the crowd, having a mentor or someone, you know, who can sort of guide you along your journey or at least give you some advice is really invaluable. I think a lot of people don't realise the value of a mentor until they've actually got one. Mm -hmm. I would always receive emails about different alumni programs or mentor opportunities and I sort of thought, I don't need that, I'll be right, I've got plenty of people to talk to, friends, family. And then when I got one, I was like, wow, why didn't I do this earlier? It just makes the pathway so much more easy, um, makes things clearer in your head. They can actually give you personal advice about your own experience and about their experiences. So. You always know who you need to talk to, with, uh, yeah. like, in the sense of like, if you're interested in this particular field or you, you're interested in pursuing this, even if it's not directly in what they do, it's likely in their sort of office or in their organisation that they work for. They'll know someone who might know the answer. There's a person, there's a tangible person that has been through what you've been through and who's willing to give their experience to you and who's willing to share their experience, not for you to replicate it, but for you to learn from it. Mm -hmm. And having that is already a one-up in your career. In a place like Melbourne Uni, it's so big. You go to lectures with 200 other students, whereas this provides rare opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people who can provide you with advice and academic experience. I think it's so easy as well to look around at everybody else and think they're more organised than you or they're doing better than you. I mean, I don't consider myself to be someone with self-confidence issues, but you, I still look around and I'm comparing myself to everyone and, you know, still having these, oh, am I good enough little sort of paranoias. So it is really great to have that person there saying, no, 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 you're going to be fine. Yeah. Just keep yeah, doing your thing. <laughs> Go ahead and say that a common theme between all of us in terms of what our mentors have given us is confidence. Yeah. Mm, like they've absolutely. all given us the ability to trust ourselves that we can do something or that we should do something. But they've also sort of uh, encouraged us to sort of like maybe reach a little bit higher, be a little bit more daring. Um, change things because I never would have considered law after my undergrad. I was sort of thinking about it but I would never want to practice as a lawyer. I think my alumni connection, she did a law degree and she just says the skills that you learn are so invaluable to every aspect of life. Mm -hmm. In business, in her being a CEO, she, she can see a little bit of me in herself. Um, and so for that reason, I am considering that now. I, it's a bit daunting, but it's not the worst thing in the world to stay longer at uni. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes, definitely something I'm now considering as well. And I was feeling a little bit overwhelmed by, um, you know, what job within um, the family violence sector I'd be interested in. And I'd sort of always assumed that I'd do my master's, maybe try and find some policy analysis job or something like that, and then eventually do my PhD and go into research. Her advice was, well, why don't you work in the sector for five years or so and then maybe consider doing your MBA instead? And I'd never in a million years have considered doing my MBA if I hadn't had that conversation with her. I've become a lot more interested in, in technology now and sort of seen how it is, it forms part of business and it really is a driving factor of like innovation, creativity and things like that and new products and services. Um, and I, I guess seeing my alumni actively trying to create something new. One, I can see the process that he's taken to do it. And two, it's just really bolstered my interest. It made me change my academic direction a little bit from languages to sort of like, oh, maybe buckle down and do this diploma and sort of try and reach out to people who are, are doing similar things or who have ideas of their own and uh, want to develop them. So I guess in that sense, it's pushed me to a more creative, proactive mindset.
I mean, people tell you all the time, but I think until someone, you know, close to you who you respect says it to you, you know, you don't really sink in. And that was just apply for it, Annabelle. Like, not everyone is waiting until they're overqualified for a position or an internship or a volunteer experience before they apply for it. So stop telling yourself that you're not good enough. It's better to just send in the application, hear nothing, mm. than it is to never apply for anything ever because you don't feel you're good enough. So I've definitely taken that on board and now apply to way more things than I possibly have time to do, <laughs> let alone have half a chance of actually getting. But it's been great because it now means that I'm you know, doing things that I might not have done otherwise. The most valuable insight I got was in terms of research careers. I always thought that they were quite solitary and autonomous careers and that really put me off that's why I never had considered it because I like interacting with people I'm social I didn't like the idea of sitting behind a computer for six hours a day and he taught me that that's totally wrong and his lab was very interactive he was always checking up with people projects are really collaborative it's never you're never working just by yourself on something and so that insight from him was really encouraging but we met up uh, maybe about five times this year and we just sat down and had a coffee, had some lunch, had a chat about, you know, the future and any questions that I had about the sort of path I was, pathway I was trying to go to, I could have answered by someone who was real and wasn't like sort of bound by the whole, you know, shroud of medicine, but just like a, you know, genuine person. I think what was even more valuable was that her husband also worked in research at WeHi. So I was able to get from two people who are like at the pinnacle of their fields, the two sides of the coin that I'm interested in, research and um, medicine. So it was very good to have two people to sort of bounce ideas off and sort of they kind of got me in the position that I am now, what I'm interested in doing. So, you know, um, pursue research for now, see if I like it and then see how we go from there. I think go in with an open mind. So if I had approached Tom with the mindset that I never wanted to do research, I would have never pursued the conversations that eventuated in internship. But I went in thinking, okay, yep, I'll give this a go. And that's how you get chatting. And I think if at this stage you're sort of too nervous to take the leap and do the email or the talk to the lecturer after the lecture type situation, then go for something like Ellie or I did. Focus on trying to build personal relationships first. So maybe sign up to do that intensive overseas subject. Maybe sign up to go to that camp where you're put in a position where, you know, you're automatically going to start forming personal relationships with somebody else. By the time I'd sort of cried all over die after my uh, <laughs> abseiling attempt, you know, networking from there on in wasn't going to be a big deal anymore. We already had that bond. And I mean, I've certainly talked to friends who've been on overseas intensive subjects and said that the kind of relationships they were able to build with staff members over there, they would have never have been able to do just sitting in the classroom. Don't be the version of yourself you think they want to see. Everyone changes a little bit when they talk to certain people. But there's an obvious you know, willingness to come across as the best version of yourself, but don't change that too much. Those little tweaks of individuality is what will connect you with the person that you're talking to. I think the key at the end of the day is that we have to be the ones that take the first step. There's all those opportunities out there, but they're not gonna come to you. Well, in your case, they did. <laughs> um, but in general, they're not gonna come to you unless you get your foot in the door and, you know, make the effort. And really, do we regret it? Like, at least not yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>